Well, I can only tell you that things are changing rapidly, quickly. We are not, we are in a, actually we've entered, everything is changing so quickly. We're not only in a new era, but the world is changing. Needs to. And there's something that you and I must maintain, and that's to constantly be consistent and alert. We want to be consistent and alert in everything. The word says to be ready in season and out. Well, you can't be if you're not connected. Amen. So we want to be consistent and alert. Everyone say consistent and alert. In Romans chapter 1. Oh, happy days. Remember, Jesus said he came to bring us life and life abundantly. Life and life abundantly. He also warned us that in the latter days, the latter times, in the last days, that many would depart from the faith, taking heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. So we know that there's going to be false religions and all kinds of other foolishness that's going on, even the use of artificial intelligence that will begin to combat against mankind. And it will actually start, and they're trying to right now cause mankind to kill mankind. That's the enemy's tactic. In verse 16, let's speak it. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, which is a message of truth. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who what? Believes, and what's the word believe mean? Follow. So if you're not a follower, then you ain't going to work. For the Jew first, and also for the Greek, for in, in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. That's powerful. From faith to faith. And they mean, in other words, there's a measure of faith, then there's an increase. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, grab hold of something here because it says that we should live by faith. Live by faith. So he's saying faith is life because if you're not living by faith, then you're dead spiritually. Does everybody get it? If you're not living by faith, then you're dead spiritually. It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppose the truth, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. That's why everyone was born with a measure of faith. <clears throat> because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. And change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie. They exchanged the truth of God for the lie because they lost faith. And we'll talk about this in a minute. And worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Again, he says that you and I are to live by faith. There's something important about this because he says then you and I must keep faith alive. We must keep faith alive. Because the enemy wants to come and steal, kill, and destroy. He knows that if he can diminish your faith he knows that if he can disconnect you 
He knows that it's faith that pleases God. And he knows that if he can move you out of position where you trust yourself more than you trust God, then you are living spiritual death. Amen? And Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Keeping faith alive. We are in a time right now where we've got to keep faith alive. That it means it must be exercised. It must be activated all the time. That's why the word tells us to acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways. It's why he tells us to constantly have praise on your tongue so that you are keeping faith. <clears throat> we'll talk more about the connection of faith. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, let's speak it. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So are you going to run with this endurance without faith? No, won't work. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor discourage, be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his what? Of his holiness. So looking unto Jesus, the one who connected us back to the Father and home. Jesus is the one that connected us. Amen? Amen? So chastening comes to warn. Chastening comes to warn us. It comes to reconnect us. It comes to awaken us to the life of faith. When you think about faith, F-A-I-T-H, faith, it means forever attached into the into the heavenlies, forever attached into the heavenlies. So faith has a requirement. It must be alive. So it's our responsibility to keep faith alive. Faith is your connection. The word says that faith comes by hearing the word of God. Amen. It also says by praying in tongues, you increase your faith. In Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. In verse 1, let's speak it. Now faith is the substance. Say it again. Now faith is the substance. Say it again. Now faith is the substance. It is the substance of things hoped for. So faith, substance, is not seen. Amen? So faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, 
the evidence of things not seen. For it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were formed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So faith is substance that is unseen. Does everybody get that? Now, faith being the, is the unseen substance that creates. Faith is the unseen substance that not only creates, it connects. And it, it flows the divine life to those whom faith is alive. You're going to need to get an image, so. When a child is born into this world, it comes with an umbilical cord because it's attached to the mother. The child in that realm, in the womb, is kept alive for what feeds from the umbilical cord. Does everybody get it? Faith is a spiritual umbilical cord. It was created by the word of God that allows the life of the spirit to flow through. Without faith, there's spiritual death. Lack of faith causes open doors to backsliding. Again, faith connects us to the future. Why? Because faith is attached. Amen? It's forever attached into the heavenlies. It connects us to the future so that you and I can live in the present. So we're actually living in the future even though we're living in the present. Amen? By keeping faith alive, you keep your future alive. I was in prayer this morning and I got downloaded really quick. And that's when the Lord gave me the definition of faith, showed me a vision of the umbilical cord, and told me about if it's forever attached into the heavenlies. And uh, there was two other confirmations of what was going on. Because I w went to my wife this morning. I said, man, I had to download. It was just bam, bam, really quick. I, didn't, I couldn't even write it down fast enough. There was just so much. I said, but I'm sure it will unfold during the day. And it kept stirring in me and burning in me and and he says, you know, my, my people are not living by faith. They're still living according to what they feel, what they think. Even some of the things that they believe, they're incorrect. They're still trying to touch everything. And they don't believe that I can do anything. They lose sight that I'm God. I created them. I created faith. I sent them into this world with a measure of faith so that their faith could increase and then whatever I ask, I'll do because it's by faith. Hebrews 2, or Ephesians chapter 2. By faith, this is faith. This is the substance that's unseen. In this spiritual umbilical cord is flowing the living word and the life of the spirit. Ephesians 2. Oh, happy days. Verse 1, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world. That was without faith. According to the prince of power of error, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. 
and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, for by grace you have been saved. So here's something important. You are saved by grace. Grace is the plan of God, right? But you live by faith. You were saved by the plan, but you're living by faith now. Now, there's no such thing as blind faith. None. People that say they're walking in blind faith are not walking in faith at all. They actually are blind because faith brings sight. Does everybody get it? Faith brings sight. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 6 of verse 5 again. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you've been saved, and raised us together, and made us sit together where? In heavenly places. So we are connected in heavenly places through faith, by faith. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through what? Through faith. Why? The message came through faith. Does everybody get this? The word of God and the spirit of life flow through the spiritual cord which is created by and established by faith. That is faith. It is your, faith is your connection. Not to your past, to the future. There is no faith in the past. And people are still living on the past because they're trying to put their faith in the past of what they've done instead of putting their faith in the future, what Jesus has done. There's two different things. You will always fail if you put your faith in your past. Victory is only established from the future, not from the past. Everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift from God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for what? Good works. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Again, he made us alive through faith and saved us by grace. It was the plan to escape. That's what grace is. The plan to escape and rescue. Faith is a lifeline from the life giver. Faith is a lifeline from the life giver. <clears throat> by keeping faith alive, you keep your identity alive. By keeping faith alive, you keep your identity alive. Once your faith begins to drift, so does your identity. First Corinthians 2. You will be challenged on your faith. The world is challenging the body of Christ on their faith. The enemy of compromise and complacency and laziness is an attempt to nullify your faith or diminish or cause you to drift. Listen, challenges, traumas, effects, all of these things, trials, tribulations, and afflictions will always test your faith. The enemy knows. So you didn't get something your way. So what? <clears throat> but I asked for it. So what? Faith is truly trusting all the way through to God's time, not ours. Amen? Faith has no buts. 
but, but. That's what they call mopeds. Amen? Amen. But, but, our mopeds, memes, our rice burners, and come out, come out, come out, it's a Harley. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. So he wasn't going to be swayed by anything. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the what? Power of God. See, this is what's happening right now. That battle to maintain your connection in faith because, see, these traumas and all these things that are going to come against you right now, I don't care if it's sickness, disease, I don't care if it's something has happened in your life to you, your children, your boss, it doesn't matter anything, you will be challenged. Your faith will be tested. You will be tried. Because that's what's happening right now. See, the enemy knows that God is releasing all kinds of things to his children. And the enemy will try to nullify your faith, which gets you out of position. Because, see, you must receive by faith. Somebody get it? You receive by faith. Why? You receive him because he says so. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? <laughs> In verse 6, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age, if they had known, <laughs> they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory, but it was kept from them. So your faith, which is trust and connection to the Lord, is not in man. Your faith is not in man. It is in the power of God. Faith is the power to overcome. Without faith, you can't overcome. Why? Because faith is your connection with the Lord. And the higher level connection with the Lord, the more faith you have. Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4. Verse 11. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. How many of y'all know that when you're walking in faith, you're at rest? If you're not at rest, you ain't walking in faith. Something's clogging the flow of faith. If you're worrying and fearful and so forth, something's clogging the flow of faith. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is what? The word of God is what? Living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So we see that the word of God accesses all these places. Amen. And there is no creature hidden from his sight. Did you notice that the word of God is now called he? 
And there's no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Hello. <laughs> Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are without sin. And let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we see here that the word of God is alive. Why? Because it's flowing in the spiritual cord of grace. It flows. Everything flows in this. The word of God and the spirit of life. They're both living. 2 Corinthians 3. Second Corinthians 3 and verse 1. Do we begin again to commend ourselves or do we need as some other epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart. And we have such trust through Christ toward God. Faith is trust. Amen? You will be challenged on what you trust. Are you going to trust God or what man says? Are you going to trust what you feel or what God says? And we have such trust toward, through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our su sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills and the spirit gives life. So we are in the ministry of the spirit, which is ministry of breath also. But without faith, there is no flow. Amen? There's no flow. Faith alive is trust. The Spirit gives life. Faith alive creates the cord of connection by the Word of God and allows the Spirit of life to flow all the way through for me and you and through us into this world. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. So is faith going to, is power going to be manifested without faith? No. No. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not dis in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, and but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal bodies. Wow mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus also will raise up Jesus, will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes. That grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are what? Not seen. 
For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? They are eternal. So the treasure of the life of Christ is kept alive by faith. It's kept alive by faith in the flow of the Spirit that the plan of God and grace of God will manifest through the vessels of God. Affliction and chastening is to awaken us into a living faith that the world cannot see. But you see it by the eye of faith. Because faith will bring a different sight to you. It's no longer a carnal sight. Faith brings a sight that sees through. Why? Because you're connected to the future. Does everybody understand this? So you begin to see the future. What? The promises of God is future. His covenant is future. So we're living according to what he's saying, not according to what man's saying. We're living according to not how we feel, not according to our circumstances and trials and afflictions. We're living according to what he is saying, what he has said, and what his promises are. Amen? Ephesians 4. In verse 11, let's speak it. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the, of the faith, so that we all see, so that we're all being fed, so we're all flowing, so we're all filled. And of the knowledge of the Son of God to a what? perfect man, to the measure, the stature of the fullness of the anointing, or Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effect of working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Wow. So we see here that there is a unity of faith so that the flow of life is constant through the spiritual cord of life, which keeps faith alive in us. Constantly flowing. Constantly flowing. That's why the word says feed those who eat Christ. In other words, like the communion, drink his blood and eat his flesh, which is a representation of eating the word of God and drinking the spirit of God. Well, it's all flowing through that umbilical cord to you and I. But if the umbilical cord is not sustained by the living faith, it begins to diminish and crumble. So that's why it's our responsibility to maintain and keep faith alive because that keeps that flowing. Is everybody okay on this? It keeps us separated from a faithless life in the world. The world walks in a false faith. Their faith is in themselves, which is dead. Amen? It's dead. Their faith is in their jobs, which is dead. Their faith is in their spouses and in their families. and all. That's dead. Your faith must be him and only him. That's what keeps everything else alive. It's when the enemy begins to alter your faith. Does everybody get this? In other words, the doctor tells you something, right? Okay, you got what he says. But your faith is not in the doctor. Your faith is in the healer. If your faith is in the doctor more than in the healer, you'll stay sick. Hello. Or it takes a longer time to recover. So that's why pharmacia is around. It keeps people alive on a false faith. 
Does everybody understand? Look at how many people are taking antidepressants, yet they're depressed. And all of those things dull your connection. All antidepressants dull your connection. They dull it. That's what the enemy plays. And today you take your child for a checkup, and next thing you know, he's got ADD or whatever it is. I don't know. Or what, what do you mean? There's nothing wrong with him. Well, yeah, you better put him on medication. They're not going to tell you he's got a demon. They're going to, you know, they, they don't get that because they have no faith. Their faith is in themselves, which is dead. Their faith is in their education, which is dead. Their faith is in their diplomas, which is dead. Does everybody get this? Good. Praise God. Unity of the faith is so that the flow of life is consonant through the cord of life, keeping that keep alive in faith so that you and I maintain a living faith. Again, it keeps us separated from the world because the world is faithless. Everything associated with the world is dead faith. Second Peter 1. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Keeping faith alive. Verse 2. Chapter 1. Second Peter. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Wow. So we see knowledge is the word. Amen? Divine power is the flow of the Spirit connected to the future of the heavenly habitation through faith that's kept alive through the umbilical cord. It manifests the divine nature of Christ that rejects all corruption. Why? Because corruption will disqualify faith. Those that don't walk by Faith or living faith are disconnected. Uh, give me a, a little example. Like a, a, a deep sea diver. Amen? He's, if he's a deep sea diver, do you ever see those old, they've got like deep, they got to stay down there for a while. If they're, especially if they're welders and they work on oil rigs and stuff like that. They actually called hard hats. And they wear these lead shoes and they go down in the ocean and they carry all this gear. Well, they are connected to the surface with an oxygen line and a communication line. That oxygen line and communication line is called faith. <laughs> Amen? So in this, it's connected to the surface. They can't exist underwater without that flow. It's impossible. It's a whole other realm there, isn't it? Well, you've got to look at yourself now being born again of the future. Living in a present time that your connection now, your life existence is through living faith. You are now that deep sea diver <laughs> and you are connected to the surface which now is connected to the throne of God. That's who we are now. We must keep faith alive. And that cannot be stagnant. It must be activated all the time. All the time. Amen? Because that's why many are walking, are walking dead in this realm because they're not walking by living faith. 
Faith is the flow of the divine life and the divine nature of God. Why? Because you're allowing him to flow through you and manifest. James 2. We cannot exist as a Christian without living faith. Amen? James 2. In verse 14. That's why the word says all things are going to work to the good. All things are going to work to the good. All things are gonna, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am more than a conqueror. If you be for me, who can be against me? I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing. I'm seated in heavenly places. This is all faith. You are calling those things that are not as though they are. That's called faith. You're keeping faith alive by what's coming out of your mouth also. Because what you speak is what you eat. Verse 14. Let's speak it. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? What saves us? Grace. Somebody get it? Grace saves you. It's the plan of God. But to manifest the plan of God, you've got to have what? Faith. <laughs> If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warm, and be filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is what? Dead. Why? Because it's not activated. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe <laughs> and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is what? Dead. Is dead. Wow. Faith without works is dead. Faith is the divine flow of life, produces works of the faith called fruits of his image. They are produced fruits of his image. When faith is alive, so is he. I'm going to say that again. When faith is alive in you, so is he. Keeping faith alive. One of the things that disqualifies faith is unforgiveness, bitterness. Because it's faith in the past. It's something that occurred to you in your past. Does everybody get it? It nullifies faith. Ephesians 1. Simple, simple release tonight. But without it, we can't exist. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him beforehand, the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to the adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will 
according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, then in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together one in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that he who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance till the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Every spiritual blessing that flows from the throne to you, and even myself, is through a living faith. Nothing flows without living faith. That's why so many times people struggle. They fall into a dry time. Amen? Because it's not only a living faith, it's a living trust, it's a living belief, it's a living expectation. So when we receive, we believe, we execute it because there's a living faith always going on. And what's it executing? It's executing his will, his purpose, and our destiny. His will, his purpose, and our destiny. Keeping faith alive is our responsibility. Amen? That's why it's important to fellowship. That's why it's important to praise. That's why it's important to speak the word. That's why it's important to pray in the spirit. That's why it's important to encourage one another. Let it flow. Then you will grow. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you'll keep, help us, Holy Spirit, keep our faith alive so that we may have a living hope, a living trust, living purpose, and a living destiny because you have come to bring us life and you are the life giver. And everything that is connected to you is associated with divine existence in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the Lord.